I'm Farah Kabir. I work for Action Aid in Bangladesh as the country director. Penny Urquhart from South Africa. I work independently on climate change adaptation programming and strategy. So we were facilitating the session on uh, mainstreaming adaptation finance for sub-national government development plans. One of the key messages was that uh, there needs to be greater investment in local level government uh, bodies and the ensuring that finances reach them. This was one. The second uh, point that came up from the discussion was about the readiness of the local government and how there is need to develop the capacity and flow of information so that the local government need, understands about international financing that may be reaching the national authorities and how the local government can access that. Mm. And what was interesting for me was seeing that many of the, of the um, inputs from the floor as well as the panelists highlighted that a lot of the constraints in this um, process to try to leverage additional adaptation funding through this main, sub-national mainstreaming um, many of these constraints relate to basic constraints in the decentralization process as well. And obviously different countries are different levels of the decentralization process, but we had um, panelists from Niger saying decentralization is incredibly young in Niger, it's only 10 years old. So this relates in a way very strongly to the lack of capacity of local government that has been identified. But as well, there was very, very strong agreement of the critical role that local government has to play in uh, supporting autonomous adaptation and also going beyond that. There was also some discussion about how the mindset within government structures of, of civil servants uh, has not helped to prioritize climate change and therefore uh, the allocation, uh, the planning that is required to support initiatives around adaptation, community-based adaptation, has been slow in the making. Yes, I mean, I think that was a very interesting point that came up is that even where there are some very, uh, very good participatory planning processes going on with the aim of, uh, you know, eventually accessing adaptation financing, local government often can't, is not able to strategically use these processes to leverage additional funding and they may then have better access to funding, for example, at the national level, but they somehow often lack the capability to strategically use these community level planning processes. And of course the other point of, that came up from the discussion was that there are international mechanisms like the Green Climate Fund and one member from the country is represented at that fund or has the opportunity to be invited to represent and therefore it is important that at the national level the national designated authority is inclusive, does create a platform for multi-stakeholders, so can they can also put in their thinking ideas and how it is impacting uh, climate change uh, in, in community setting, how adaptation is so critical. So therefore, representation should be made up of multi-stakeholders within the national boundaries, but that whatever the sharing, information, learning, good practices come out, this can be captured by the national representative and lead to any kind of negotiations for green climate fund. The one clear advocacy message that came out related to the readiness of local governments to be able to access and manage climate finance. Um, and that would be specifically to support community-based adaptation. So the message was around the need for really significant investment in local government capacity development in this regard. Um, and the second clear advocacy message was around the composition of um, the National Designated Authority for the Green Climate, Ch green climate Change Fund. So this is something that's is still being discussed and it's a, a critical period now to be able to influence what the structure of that national designated authority should be 
So as Farah just um, indicated, the feeling from the group was very much that this should be a multi-stakeholder structure, should include representation from a range of different sectors, government, um, civil society, research and academia, private sector, but very specifically should include strong representation from local governments as well as from NGOs or community-based organizations that are working at the community level. So this would be incredibly important to ensure that this critical level at which adaptation needs to occur would be, would be able to access green climate change funds.